Hi, I'm Jeff DeRiso from Beckman Collaborative, and today I'm going to show you how to harness the power of contextual data with related lists in Zoho CRM. I'll even show you how to create a custom related list that connects to a third-party application. This means that when you're looking at a particular client in your CRM, you'll be able to see data from that third-party application that's relevant to that particular client. So let's get into Zoho CRM, and I'll show you how it works. Okay, here we are in Zoho CRM, and you can see we have this nice new user interface. It's been upgraded recently. We have our modules along the left sidebar here instead of across the top. And what I like is that we can make this sidebar go away and we can hover back over it to navigate when we need to. So right now I'm in the accounts, I'm in our test account. Now the accounts module can also be called the companies module or the clients module. And it's where you keep the information about the organizations that you do business with. Now you can see these related lists here on the left side. So the first type of related list is simply a record in a different module that's related to this client here. So if we look at deals, you can see we have this test deal that we made that was associated to this client because we chose this account in the accounts lookup field within the deal. So it showed up here automatically. Now, if you've seen our database basics video series, you know that anytime you create a lookup field within Zoho CRM, it automatically creates a related list in the module that's being looked up. So we have our deals, we have our contacts, we also have activities, which includes tasks, meetings, and calls that are related to this client. And then the second type of related list is we have related lists that bring in data from other applications. In some cases, that's Zoho applications. You can see we have our Zoho projects related list here. When we integrate Zoho projects and Zoho CRM, it activates this related list. And we can, of course, associate an existing project to a client or just create a new project in Zoho projects right from our CRM. So these third-party integration related lists are extremely powerful because it allows us to stay in the CRM and continue what we're doing, but also affect what's going on in these other applications. We can also look at our Zoho Finance data. So if I have any invoices or estimates in any of our Zoho Finance applications, such as Zoho Books or Zoho Billing, then we would see them here in this related list. And also when you download an extension from the marketplace here, it often will create some sort of custom related lists to bring that third party data into Zoho CRM. But what happens if you're working in a third party application and there is not a marketplace extension? So for those cases, you can create your own custom related lists using Deluge scripting language. So I'll click on this Clockify projects related list here. So Clockify is another project management software. I created a free account and made these two test projects here. And this is showing me information from those two projects, the time that we estimated and the time that's been logged. And if I click on this project name here, it actually takes me to the project in Clockify. And if I look at the status, you can see that the time estimate and the time tracked is accurate. So we are getting that real time contextual data in the CRM. So if I go if I go into my account actual fields, my account records, you can see I have this Clockify client ID here. And this is what allows me to sync this client with our Clockify client. And that allows us to pull this unique information from this related list, only the projects that are associated with this client. So let's get into our setup and I'll show you how we did this. So normally when we're connecting Zoho to a third party application, we use a connection. But in the case of Clockify, we can do this simply with an API key. So what I did is I created a CRM variable here. You can see the Clockify API key, and I just pasted my unique Clockify API key in as the value for that variable. And then I can access this variable from any function. And anytime I do an API call to Clockify, I use this variable. So let's get into our functions. So the first thing we do to create these custom related lists is we create a new function and we make sure in our category dropdown that we select related list. So I've already created this Clockify function, so I'll show you. Here it is here. 
Now you see the user interface update has also applied to our Deluge editor screen. And we actually have some new features as well. We can now have version control where we can revert back to previous versions. And we also have the execute button, which is now separate from the save button, which means that if we have a script, an active script that when we test it with the execute button, it doesn't automatically save it and affect our active automations. So that is a, a useful feature and a useful upgrade within the Deluge editor. So you can see that this, this function returns a string and we bring in our string, our Clockify client ID as an argument. So we declare our blank string here and then we get our API key from the org variable that I showed you before and we use our workspace ID, and then we have our header, our header and our parameters. We're passing our API key, and we're, we're getting only projects for that specific client. Then we're doing our API call to Clockify to get those projects, and if we get a response, we are then populating our XML string with the record tag. And then we declare an iteration variable and we set the value to zero so we can insert this into our row numbers within our XML string. So then we do a loop by saying for each project and projects, and we get the name, the ID, the hourly rate, the estimate, the time logged, and we begin formatting our XML string here. With the row number, we insert the iteration variable. So each time this runs through the loop, we add one at the end to that variable. So we know that however many rows are, however many projects are at our projects list. And then we declare our FL value tag. The value is the column name of our related list. Now, if we want it to be a link, we set our link attribute to true. Now we put our unique URL here and we have inserted our project ID from Clockify into that unique URL so that it, when we click on it, it navigates us to that specific project. And then we insert our other values from this API call into our XML string. We reformat the time values a little bit, and then we close with our row tag. And then after, we're, after we get out of the loop, we close the record tag. And if we don't get any projects from our projects response, we, we show an error message here that say no projects exist for this client. So then we return at the end of all that, we return this response XML strip. And that's what gives us that nice looking related list that's unique to this client because the argument that we're passing through is this Clockify client ID string. Okay, so once we've written this function, and we just go to the top and click save and close. I'll just click close because I haven't made any changes. And we'll go back to our account in the detail view. And we go here to the related list and we simply click add related list. And we click functions. And we just click add now. And you can see I've reached the limit of five custom related lists per module. So I can't go to the next screen. But on that next screen, you just map the Clockify client ID field to that argument of the function. And then it'll just show up here on the side and when you click on it, it loads the information from the third party application. So that is how you create a custom related list in Zoho CRM. It's a great way to get contextual data about specific clients or about specific contacts or marketing campaigns without clicking around and going to different applications. We can stay in our CRM as our central hub and we can bring everything there to look at it and make our decisions. So I hope you got something out of this video. Please leave any questions you may have in the comments and you can always contact Beckman Collaborative for support. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.